Welcome to another unit in business mathematics. This time I'm going to talk about matrices and vectors. So what are those two and which specific types are there, which specific properties can a matrix actually have. For this I'm starting simply with a definition that a matrix is nothing else than a rectangular arrangement of numbers. That's just a simplification because mathematically speaking we're talking about linear transformations but here in our context we first assume it's just much easier simply rectangular arrangement of numbers. And now look for example like this that the numbers are just one after another in one row three different numbers or three different columns. That's what we for example call vectors or row vectors. Row vectors they are only one row and have separate entries. So more columns, um, more columns but only one row. In opposition we have the column vectors. Here we only have one column and many entries. So one column, many rows or more rows. However, well, we call these vectors, in the end, vectors are the same thing as a matrix. So in this case, we can either talk about a vector or we can call this here a matrix and that is a one times three matrix, one row, three columns. Whereas this here is a three times one matrix, three rows, one column. So when you talk about an n times m matrix, it's always n rows, m columns. So that was vectors, the first easiest type of matrices. In general, as I said, we talk about m times n or n times m matrices with the first value being the number of rows, second value being the number of columns and everything that's inside here, so all the numbers we refer to as the elements, in particular if we have an element a, m, n, this means the element which is in the matrix at row m and column n. So here this one would be 2, 1. But we see this later on with some numbers and examples. Or in more general form down here. So the first one in the upper left, that's where we always start with 1, 1, first row, first column. At the end of the first row, so we are still in the first row, so still a 1 here. We are at the nth element, so in the nth column. So this is the element A1n. First row, nth column. So that's basically the idea what for us the concept of a matrix means. And then we have specific types of matrices. First are the so-called quadratic matrices. That's simply a matrix which has the same number of columns and rows. So here, the first one, the A, two columns, two rows. That's a two times two matrix, so it's quadratic. Similarly here, three rows, three columns, three times three matrix, it's quadratic. So that's relatively easy. Slightly more sophisticated version is a quadratic matrix where everything is zero except for the values on the diagonal, which looks like this. So here only on the diagonal, so where we have A11, A22, A33, only there we have values which could be different from zero. Everything else is zero, has to be zero. So this is a two times two diagonal matrix. That's a three times three diagonal matrix. 
And well, if we talk about diagonal matrices, we can also or directly state that this matrix is symmetric. So in the upper right corner, we find the same as in the upper uh, lower left corner. So if we were to put a mirror here on both sides of the mirror, we would have the same numbers. So that diagonal matrices by nature are also symmetric. Then, in addition to diagonal matrices, usually when we try to get there by reformulating our matrices, we try first to aim to realize a triangular matrix form, matrix form, usually in an upper triangular matrix context. So this means that if we talk about upper triangular matrix, we have like a triangle here in the upper right of the matrix and the lower left is filled with zeros. So everything to the lower left of the diagonal is zeros. Here we can see this in even more detail. Triangle, everything in the lower left, that's those three values here, are zero. That's what we call an upper triangular matrix. Upper means it's in the upper right corner, the triangle. And well, aside from these types of matrices and the so-called symmetric ones, which I explained earlier, we also have two specific matrices. If we talk about normal numbers, we know we have two special types of uh, two special numbers. The first one, the zero. So if we add the zero to any number or subtract this from any number, we will always get zero. And then we have the one. If we multiply or divide with this one, we will always get the original result. Well, we have a corresponding pendant for this as well for matrices. First off, we have the so-called identity matrix. Identity matrix is a quadratic matrix, a diagonal matrix, where on the diagonal all elements are one. So it's like a very large one. So only on the diagonal I have ones, all other elements are zero. And they are often written with an E or with an I and two vertical lines or there are different ways of writing the identity matrix. Some people even write a one and then put an additional vertical line to the right of the one. So there are different ways of describing the identities. The identity, however, only here on the diagonal does it have ones. The rest is zero. The important part, all the diagonal elements are one. It's not like can be one. All the diagonal elements are one and everything not on the diagonal has to be zero. So it's only these types and then four times four, five times five, six times six and so forth. The identity matrix takes the role which the one has in normal calculation normal arithmetic. Well, if we have a pendant for the one, we also have a pendant for the zero, and that's the zero matrix. And that's simply a quadratic matrix where all entries are zero. Well, in this case, we are actually talking about quadratic matrices. However, a zero matrix can also be just a rectangular matrix. So, Basically, every matrix that only contains zeros can be described as a zero matrix. However, in many cases, we will also work with quadratic matrices where, well, in this case, all the entries, as I said, are zero. And well, the zero or the zero matrix works similar to the zero with normal numbers. So if you add or subtract the zero matrix to or from any other matrix, the result will always stay the same. So that's two special types of matrices. Well, that's basically all for this short introduction into working with matrices or rather into matrices as such and the relation between matrices and vectors. Well, I hope you enjoyed listening to it and I say goodbye. 
see you next time.